What'd you have in mind? Adam, how many hours did you and I spend talking about how flawed the debates were? Especially the primary debates. A lot of hours. Well, now you and I are in a position to do something about that. Follow me. The questions have to be tougher. They have to be able to square their campaign rhetoric with facts. They have to be stopped when they're not answering the question, and they have to be called out when their answers contradict the facts. Guys, get in place. Our job is to find the two candidates who will give the voters the best competing arguments, and I don't believe we're seeing that. We have to put the candidates on a witness stand. Would you have them swear an oath? Just let them do it. If baseball players testifying about steroids in front of a House subcommittee are subject to perjury, I don't know why presidential candidates aren't. But I'm not reaching for the stars. I'm reaching just an inch home. Welcome to Princeton University in Princeton, New Jersey, for the fifth debate in the 2012 Republican primary race, co-sponsored by Atlanta's Cable News and the Republican Party of New Jersey. At which point, we'll explain the rules, which is there are no rules. I question a candidate until I'm done. They can each make an opening statement. Beginning with you, Congresswoman Bachman. Hi, my name is Michelle Bachman. I'm a former federal tax litigation attorney, the owner of a successful company, and also a member Hang of... Hang on. Is that supposed to be a Michelle Bachman impersonation? No, no. Nobody's doing impressions. This isn't an SNL sketch. These people have spent two months studying stump speeches, interviews, on the record statements, previous debate performances in order to come as close as possible to answering our questions the way the candidates would. After the opening statements, we'd move to questioning. Senator Santorum, you've said that your campaign is about freedom and that 20 years from now, you don't want to be telling your grandchildren how America once was free. Name three freedoms you had the day before President Obama was sworn in that you don't have now. Obamacare, to begin with. Obamacare is the most egregious... Have you had to change doctors? May I finish? No, sir. Have you had to change doctors? No. Has anyone in your family had to change doctors? Has there been any change at all in health care for you or your family? I'm talking about Obamacare now. My question was, name three freedoms that you had the day before the president was sworn in that you don't have now. Mr. Speaker, you just said that if you're elected, the price of gas will be $2.50 a gallon. How does a U.S. president control the price of oil? Governor, you've said that as president, you will never apologize for America. This question's in two parts. Name an instance in which the president has apologized for America. And can you imagine no instance in which a U.S. president should apologize for America? Mr. McAvoy, I find it reprehensible that the liberal media would try to pit Republicans against one another. And I, for one, won't stand by while it happens. This is the Republican primary, Mr. Speaker, and you're running for the nomination. It wasn't my idea to pit you against anyone. It was yours. Congressman Paul, I'd like to discuss the newsletters you wrote and sold starting in the 1990s? I've already said everything I have to say. I never wrote those letters, and I never even read them. They had your name on them. They had your signature on them. You made money from them. And in 1996, you defended them to the Dallas Morning News. I don't like stop. pretending. Everybody stop. There's no need to go along any further. I see where you're going. Adam, listen. 